this and what's in here, you're gonna be like, what does that have to do with the Bronco? Just bear with me. Welcome back. So, you saw the intro, so you're probably wondering like I am. I'll preface it with, you guys know that I wanna go full time. Uh, I almost have 20 years at the same company, and so my next progression in what I do as a hobby and another profession, I guess, is YouTube and Overland and then document it all and then show everybody and, and show them how to get there and where and how and what to use and stuff. This is a progression of it. So let's jump in. You guys are nosy. Hey, ready? <laughs> okay. I'm gonna show you a better view, but just hear me out. You guys will understand when the Bronco is completely built, why this is so cool. Let's check it out. Yep, that's what it is. So, this is a V-Bore. Let's see if it shows the actual stuff on the outside. It doesn't. So, what it is, is it's a V-Bore. Uh, five kilowatt diesel heater. The reason why is this is what I'm going to use at a, as a heating unit to heat the cabin of this Bronco and then of course the rooftop tent when I get the Ursa Minor or something similar. Um, so let's take a look. Okay, so I'll jump into it real quick so everybody that hasn't seen anything before will understand. So my Bronco has got a complete deck, si deck system that I built. The back seats are removed. And if you wanna see that video, if you'll go to the main page, go to the playlist and look for Brock Landers, that's all about this Bronco. Anyway, um, the reason why it's a big deal is because everybody was wondering when I was building this stuff, what exactly this big hump was. Well, you're about to find out in this video. Another thing, Chris Schantz is probably my biggest influence on how I specifically um, overland and how I look at conceptual overlanding and, and just everything about it really is based off his same principles, um, albeit I'm probably a little nuttier <laughs> behind the wheel of this thing. But his is built on a, a, a Jeep platform, a Jeep JK platform with an Ursa Minor uh, ca uh, cap plus tent combo. So they replace the hard top and in the new uh, hard top, Ursa Minor builds a tent. So it's an all-in-one unit. That's what this is going to be. It's just going to be on a Bronco platform. So this in, is in preparation for it, right? And so the reason why I say that is because everybody during the build phase was wanting to know what this is. Well, this is actually going to be the housing unit for the diesel heater. Now the diesel heater uh, has an opening in here and it goes all the way down to the frame. And so It'll sit on the actual physical frame body, the metal steel body of this, so that there's nothing going to be jeopardized by heat or anything else like that. So let's jump in. I know it sounds crazy, but even while I'm camping before I get the top, as long as it's still cold now, I'll be able to run this thing and keep the windows somewhat down and it'll just keep everything nice and toasty because I know you guys are probably going to call me a sissy or a pansy, but... You know, I was in Telluride in, in December for uh, uh, New Year's doing a big camping trip up there and, and everything was closed. So I was climbing over big drifts to get into trails and stuff. And I bet most of the time it wasn't, it wasn't warmer than 20. And then a lot of times down it was, you know, you know, in the lower fives or sixes, minus fives or sixes overnight. So it's something I need. So um, let's jump in. Okay, so um, I, I'm a, I'm a V-Vor fan. That's exactly what's on Kong. Um, and just running it like I run it, and I've got a bunch of uh, explanation on that stuff and, and when I'm doing the install about how to run them properly and not get the altitude issue and not get the um, soot buildup issue. Uh, this is what I've gone with, and I'm absolutely super happy about it. Uh, these kits always come with everything you need. Here is the first thing you get is a complete fuel tank. Now this fuel tank is the same one that I have on uh, the front of 
uh, Kong, and if you want to see that, I've got, like I said, I've got videos of that. You can go look at it in, uh, in the playlist. But this in Kong, in that small space, is good for about uh, five nights. And that's running at about uh, nine hours at most. Nine hours at five nights is what this, and I believe this is a 10 liter, what this 10 liter will support off one of these diesel heaters. Uh, and the reason being is because I keep it highly vented. Uh, and so that's why I run it so long. Not because it doesn't produ produce enough heat, but because I like it to run it at a higher temperature so it's more efficient, which means you have complete burn and less soot buildup. But I end up having to keep my windows and stuff open more, which is okay with me because I end up sleeping uh, with just a regular blanket and a sheet like you would at home uh, in normal temperatures. So take it how you will. That's my thought on how you should do it. Anyway, all these kits come whatever you need. This is gonna be a standard base plate in every one of the kits. It's pre-cut out for exhaust and intake, air intake, and of course screws and such. This kit came with two mufflers, and I was kind of curious about that, and I wasn't sure why. I wasn't sure if, um, if it's because they send you a spare, what have you, I don't know. So anyway, I don't want this to be a huge long video because there's quite a bit of install, and I'm, and I'm gonna do the install in a, in a manner that I can show you kind of how I'm gonna go about it and get it done. But I'm gonna try not to completely bore you guys to death with every little install uh, descriptive direction. So, simple. This is a rubber gasket, okay? And here's your fuel intake, this red button here, this one. And then your exhaust and um, air intake. And then for the fan, so this I believe is your exit. Yeah, so this is your exit. This is where the hot air comes out. And then this is where it recirculates. So. This needs to be inside here where it can access the air inside because that way it's recirculating the air. The way I've got it done in the camper because uh, of the way it sits, I don't recycle the same air like you would do uh, in a house and have a return system uh, just due to the fact that it's a small area and it would kind of be hard for me to pipe it back in and then kind of have it recirculating. Uh, in this instance, I'm gonna have it do that but it's not necessary. If you, they're so efficient and they warm so well the, the air that if you were to pipe fresh air in the entire time, constantly, it's perfect. Like it, it's not like it wouldn't be able to keep up. And I've used this thing in minus 21 was the coldest it's ever been in. And it, I didn't have to run it on max to make sure that it stayed warm in a camper. Um, matter of fact, I think medium, medium is the highest I've ever used it as far as using it for physical heat. Now, I'll tell everybody this, that when you first start it up, start it on for the camp trip, I turn it all the way up and let it burn everything off for about 10 minutes. And then the next morning when I'm getting up, I'll point the vent towards the door in this specific application of the camper and I'll turn it all the way up again and let it burn off anything that kind of maybe kind of collected over the night. And so uh, that way every time, and I'll let that run for probably 15 minutes. That way every time I turn it off and it physically cycles off, We've cleaned that burn chamber the best we can on every use, and that's what you need to do. Every time you use it, burn it off to start it, then bring it back down to temperature that you want to heat the space that you need, and then before you cycle it off in the morning when you're done with it and gotta start traveling again, crank that sucker up to high and let it run for 15 minutes and burn everything off. Okay, that's my soapbox. Like I said, all these kits come with pretty much everything you'll need. Uh, it's a five kilowatt, it says it's a diesel. Uh, and it's for car camping, car heating, whatever. Either way, this is the plate that you saw earlier. Uh, it kind of works in this fashion, right? Um, and then there's your fuel tank. And then they, they give you a couple other things. All your electronics, see, I got the digital screen so that you can kind of see what you're doing. Now, there are YouTube videos, so you, it'll be on Celsius when you open it and power it up. But there are videos on YouTube that you can use to change this over to um, Fahrenheit so you know where you're at. Uh, but then it does come with a robo and you know what I found it as cheap as these little dudes are they really work and mine that one's still working and that one's been in it four years and it still works so I guess they're good anyway there's that and then this is gonna be your plumbing box right here and in the said plumbing box I'll bring it out so you can take a look Let's move all this stuff back out of our way. Get the motor back in its safety box. And that's another thing 
I'll show you this real quick, just so you see. The, the nice thing about Vivor is not all units do this. This unit comes completely separate from all the other supplies, and it's, it's enwrapped uh, this foam core so that it's even better protected. Because again, we know guys that the shipping systems these days, things show up and it gets torn up. Uh, pretty simple manual. And the neat thing I like about this is guess what guys? It's not like all the other ones. It is in English. It is very easy to understand. So if you have issues with directions, uh, get you a friend that reads well and there you go. Because all the other ones are in some other language and you're trying to determine if it's Cantonese or Indonese or Chinese or Japanese. This way it comes in English. That's why I love the Vibor product. Um, that being said, let's put all this stuff back in here so it's taken care and secure. But I'll just quickly go over it. It comes with your wiring harness, simple. It comes with all the necessary hardware, okay? Here's your fuel line. Now everybody said, oh, I don't like that fuel line. It's got issues and stuff. This fuel line is on that and it's been out in the open four years and it's never had an issue. So I don't know what issue they're having. Maybe they're running real long leaks of it and they're having problems sagging and getting low fuel pressure coming through it or something. I don't know, but I'm speculating. I don't know. Keep going. The two exhaust vents. So these are the two vents that you'll use to pipe it in. So in this application, I'm gonna have two vents coming out and one will probably face up and one will probably face towards the front of the vehicle. That way you get kind of a cabin effect, you know? And then, again, here's the wide pipe for them. And then this is gonna be the tubing that they send with it. It's flexible, you can bend it. There's two of these. There's gonna be your intake for your air for the motor side and then your fuel or your muffler pipe, exhaust pipe, whatever you want to call it. Um, these do fail after a while as long, if you don't kind of secure them in a means that they're not just hanging. If you do a real good job about securing them where they're not supporting their own weight, they'll, they'll last forever. And then the volunteer thing, this is your air filter that goes on the end of your air intake for the motor. And the number one hated thing in all uh, diesel heater worlds are these because these are our uh, a manual style uh, filter which means there's a clicking device in here that's pulling up pushing down pulling up and it goes click 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 as it pulls up it draws fuel in and then it puts down it pushes it out towards uh, the heater and so that's the here that's the noise you hear going click 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 that's this is this dude right here so let's get into the install <laughs> So now you see that this is the chamber that will allow this heater to live inside of here. And it'll be encompassed with, I guess, the walls and stuff like that, but it'll also be attached to the body of the Bronco. And everything will go directly out of the floor pan because it sets on the floor pan itself. So the exhaust and intake will go right out of the floor pan and right out into open air. So that's why I had to kind of pre pre-engineer this off measurements from other Broncos and my friends to figure out exactly how to build this so I would know how it was put together and how it would end up so that when I did get the diesel heater in, uh, in we could just go straight into installing it. So that's what we're doing now. Let's keep rolling. Okay, so now you guys can see what's going on. So those two little holes right there and that one right there is the length of that little area, cubby we'll call it, where the heater's gonna go. And so now you can see what I was talking about, about all being clear of any kind of debris, uh, wiring, piping, anything that has to do with, you know, things that actually work on the Bronco. So it's clear, and so that's where we'll come down with our exhaust, our intake, and the fuel line. Because the fuel line will have to be housed out here somewhere and that'll be something I need to determine next. So basically what I'm doing right now is uh, I pre-fit the base on it, okay? 
And now what I'm doing is taking it off because I put it in there and I mocked it up and I'll show you what I did so you can see it. And then, I mean, I do this with everything. I mock it up and then take it apart. So um, what I need to know is in the position when this goes in, what is up, what's front, what's back. And you can see that I mounted it right on here that is, this is the top, right there, this is the top. That's to the front of the truck and this is to the rear. That way when I go to orientate this in over here, I'll actually show you. So when I go to orientate this, I know where it goes. I also put it right here and align these. So now I know that when I go to put it in, I need to be basically this area in that hole. And so what I'll do now is I'll drop it in the hole and mark some areas and then cut this down where it'll fit down in there and then I'll put it down there and that'll be my drill template for all the holes. And so basically what we'll do is we'll put this in, put it on the bottom and we'll be able to drill right to it, put it on the base of the truck and then from there we'll literally just bolt through the bottom of the floor. Super simple, like super simple. And of course this line, uh, this line right here is capable of powering the generator plus and so that's why it's already run and I just had to happen the map light was on it uh, because it's already in here and this circuit's enough for the map light for those map lights and the uh, heater so it's already run so let's keep bumping along and see if we can't get a little faster okay multiple processes so what I did is I just put it down into the test fit at the first time um, I'm looking fantastic today aren't I guys <laughs> Not really. Um, and what I needed to do is I needed to take off just a little bit more than a half an inch on this so I can set it back down and test fit it again. So let's check that out. Okay, and it fits. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna center this bad boy to where I think the center is. So let's get this in here. And we're gonna use a quick I'll call it a speed square, but it's kind of not really a speed square, but in this instance, that's what we're going to use it for. Okay. And what that'll do is it'll give me a reference line where I know that it always needs to be at. Now, what we're going to do is measure this. Uh, and if I turn this way, maybe you see, we're going to measure this. And what I'm going to do is find the center um, of the box. And it's five and a half inches, but our tubes are not exactly in the middle. Uh, we're right at about two and three quarter inches. So basically what we need to do is come off this side two and three quarter inches so we'll know where uh, to put our holes, right? So let's get this where it'll fit. It fits right there, okay. So what we're gonna do, basically that's two and a half inches. So basically what I've done is just taking the diagram of the outside of the unit, use the measurements for here to here and here to here. Now I know where it's going to sit. From there, I took the template and put it down in there according to the marks and measurements off that. And that's where I'll know to where to make the holes, draw the holes, and that's where the template fits. So obviously when I remove the template and put it down in there, it should follow the same, right? guys I'm catching you guys up anyway um let you guys take a look down in there you can't really see it real well I can't get the light on it uh but I've made the holes and I prepped it with some black paint just to make sure rust right I live in a pretty dry area but always paint your bare metal um also uh while I was doing that I went ahead and fabric not fabricated but changed the bracket mount on this I shaved a little off and then got it painted as ready so that way again when it goes up under there, it's gonna be installed forever and I don't wanna ever have to change it again, right? So that's done. The next thing that happens really is I need to drill the access holes for the air in both of those, uh, front and back, and then honestly get ready to put the heater in place. Slip it down in, go up underneath, put the bracket underneath and bolt it in. And then, then it'll be ready for, um, uh, oh, the lines and then basically tightening it down. So then after that, it's tying in electrical and then getting some fuel and maybe testing it. It's kind of going too easy, I'm scared. 
Okay, so uh, quick catch up. Oh, you see I'm in a different shirt. Um, yesterday, what I did is I went ahead and painted that bracket and I'll show you guys that in a second. And then I painted the inside here with uh, black paint and the underneath where we penetrated with black paint. Again, just to reseal everything for whatever corrosive or rusting processes may take place. Um, I, I implore you guys to make sure you always do that. I know at length it's a process because you gotta paint, wait for it to dry, and then put a second coat on, wait for it to dry, and then do it. But we gotta do that. Anyway, so we're almost at the point where we're gonna go ahead and put this in, button it up. Let me get the bracket and I'll show you. So, this is it in a nutshell. So I had to kind of shrink it to fit my space and area, but we're still gonna utilize, uh, this is the fuel uh, pickup tube hole and then these are the two mount holes. The other two are just right here. So it's still gonna be used and I'm just using it as a strengthening device just so you have an extra you know, piece of metal. And this stuff is it's little bitty, it's like 16th, but still an additional layer is an additional layer of safety. So um, let me get my stuff together and we'll go ahead and get this ready to go ahead and get knocked out. Okay, so you can see the pass through for the vent. This is going to be on this side. And then this will go to the vent, and now you can see the distance right there that the hose will actually attach to. And this vent, just so you know, I can rotate it uh, 360 degrees, so I can blow the air anywhere I need to uh, in the cabin. So let me get the vacuum. I need to clean this face up real quick, and then uh, what I'll do on this is I'm just going to put silicone. I don't ever hard attach these in case I have to disassemble, disassemble everything. And silicone, silicone RTV silicone is kind of like an adhesive, but you can still remove it if you need to, and it won't damage the surfaces around it. If you go ahead and glue this in, you're not getting it out, and if you ever needed to change anything, you'd be in big trouble. So let me vacuum this up, and then we'll get this put in. All right, here it is. Uh, you can see I just barely put a little bit right along there, and I don't need to smooth it around. It's nothing like that. It's not going to come out. It's not going to look uh, unsightly. But anyway, I'm going to walk around and slide it in, and you'll see what it looks like. Okay guys, so catching up, what we did is we got it installed, okay? You can see the tube going over there, and that's gonna be what, what's considered um, the hot air into the cabin, right? Right here is your exhaust. And now let me get down on the, let me get down on this bad boy, and I'll show you guys kind of how it comes through uh, the frame and what it looks like. Okay, so as you guys can see, here's where it comes through. Here's your fuel line. And then right here is gonna be your exhaust and uh, air intake. And so now, and you can see I painted underneath it just to kind of clean it all back up. But now what I need to do is I need to go ahead and run those and attach them um, solid. I'm gonna go ahead and attach the muffler to this and make it pretty solid. And in the air, I'm gonna kind of do the same thing across this cross member. Obviously no suspension flex is in here. So nothing will change between this measurement and here ever, right? So that's why you can statically mount it to here and not worry, oh, <laughs> and not worry about anything uh, bending or, or, or pulling apart. So let's knock that out. We're not too far away from uh, firing this thing. All right, people to people to people. This is the air filter. I'll, sit. I'll bring you guys in here, let's see it. So what I did is I went ahead and knocked out the electrical, got that done and everything tied in. Um, as you can see, when I chose to put my thermostat, it's right here. And the reason why I did that is because if the air is going that way, and this is the intake temperature, it's kind of like your house. You want your thermostat by your return air, that way it's gonna circulate uh, the air until the temperature over here going in back into the heater 
regulates back to the temperature you set on your diesel heater or your thermostat in your house. So that's the concept behind it, right? So if it's blowing up there and constantly moving around and moving around, when it finally gets over here, it's coming to this intake side going back in and it reaches the temperature you set here. Uh, at that point, it'll go ahead and uh, turn off and, and go into fan mode. So that's what I did that. This is this, and let me bring, let me, let me show you um, the electrical. So there it is. Uh, I went ahead and dressed everything, tied everything to the side and attached it. And then now basically uh, this comes up to here and then that's all your extension coming out. Um, that being said, the next thing we need to do is I need to get in there real quick. And I, it's kind of hard to show you guys under the vehicle because not because it's dark, just because it's so cramped space and there's not a really good way that I can position you guys where then I can maneuver myself to do the install. So I just chose to kind of not film those specifics under the vehicle, kind of give you, you know, running, running basis of what's going on. So, um, the first thing we're gonna do is do the air, uh, air intake, and then I'm gonna do uh, the exhaust. And then after that, what we're gonna do is secure and install the um, fuel pump and wire it in. And then at that point in time, uh, we need to figure out a place to locate the diesel tank, uh, get some diesel in it, and start priming the fuel pump to bring diesel up to the actual heater and then go ahead and test it. So I'm kind of excited we're not that far away. Hey, 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 diesel heater here. Okay, let's go. All right. All right, we're going under, guys. I'm gonna spin you around. All right, so here's kind of what I have going on. So I'm gonna go over there. There's the fuel pump. There's the wire where it goes up into the... Uh, the truck itself. I need to go ahead and uh, seal that now that I'm done doing all the terminating. Um, you can see the fuel line goes out and across away from the exhaust pipe here. That way if ever anything ever happened it can never come into conjunction with the fuel, I mean with the muffler and so that gives you a good idea of what goes on here and see this comes down and around and is attached to the frame. It's higher than the high clearance exhaust so it shouldn't touch anything and then I just routed the air it goes around here and back there and you can barely see the head of it sticking out right there. And again, I've had this question before. Well, what about, you know, when you're driving, won't we fill that air up? Well, no, because there's no intake being drawn into that filter. So other than just surface dust that lands on it, dirt landing on it and stuff, um, it won't necessarily get clogged because obviously it's not on when I'm driving. So therefore there's nothing being drawn through it to suck it up and clog it up. But that's what we got looks good it's tidy it's nice and solid and it should last for a good long time all right so here we are um and this is basically all i could come up with for a temporary solution because remember when i get the um ursa minor or top on the hard top i'll actually be able to use action tracks or um what i can't remember i think it's action tracks mounts um, but either way, if not, and Ursa Minor doesn't come through, here right here on the Ursa Minor itself, I got them blank, so I'll be able to attach my tank right there, my diesel tank. So it'll actually pour it in and then down there into the heater. But for now, uh, I just went ahead and attached it to my um, Rough Country uh, tailgate mount, and I put some rubber insulators in the actual screws. That way it has the ability to wiggle, but it's solid. And then I just went up through the mount and then down through there underneath the bumper and it's attached right there. And that was just what I thought would be sufficient enough to allow me to use it. And you can see kind of how it works here. Um, that's all it is really. It just kind of sets just like that, routes down through that body area, all protected and then up to the fuel pump. So it's almost time to put some fuel in it which is right here for now. And of course this fuel, this fuel gauge is gonna be kind of a, or the fuel inlet's gonna be turd, but I'll have to just open this door to put diesel in it for now. Uh, but again, once we get the um, full mounting system, it'll be on the side and we won't have to do this. So this will get us going for now and then allow us to um, at least use the system until we get the full camper up here because we're probably gonna retire that dude. So let's knock it out. there so everything's done all I have to do is attach the electricals together for the thermostat and the reason why I want to wait to do that 
I kind of cleaned up everything uh, because the next thing you're gonna do is the beat, uh, the diesel pump priming system or process. And so sometimes it takes a couple times before it even fires up. But anyway, I'm gonna do that next and start that priming process. And I'll kind of let you hear what it looks like or hear what it sounds like, see what it looks like. Um, and all this stuff's in a directions. And again, which is why I go with the beaver stuff. It's beaver, whatever. Um, Uh, there's the actual brand and the reason again having directions that you can read is huge trying to cross-reference other languages to ours sometimes just doesn't work so let's pump this baby all right guys if you can hear that that's the actual field pump priming what it's doing is it's draws starting to draw process from the tank to the actual unit itself all, I'm not gonna really show you guys that because there's a million videos on it and all of these are different. So um, just so you know, I mean, this is probably about four and a half foot of hose, okay? And I just did it for a hundred seconds and I can tell that there's still uh, air bubbles in the line. So I'm gonna go ahead and do it again like that and hit okay. And then it starts again, because again, you don't wanna start the burn chamber. I'll get in here. You don't wanna start the burn chamber um, without it being properly filled and so basically what you're doing is watching it and so i'm talking to you guys now and in a second i'm going to get down there and take a look and see what it what it looks like and how close it is okay all right so we got power on got the time set and let's go ahead and just push power basically once you prime the uh fuel pump and you see the diesel's all the way to the uh bottom of the pickup valve going into the um diesel heater and you've got fuel going through your entire line, basically it's ready to fire. And all you do is press the power button. Uh, some are different, but still you just press the power button. And if you look on the display and I'll show you here in a second, it'll show you kind of what's going on here. Come here, let me, let me see if I can show you guys what's going on. All right. So if you see it, you see the fans turning and then in the back right here, that shows that that's the glow plug is, is heating up, the heating elements on. And you see down here, in and out, there's an up arrow, a red and a green going up and down right now. And that tells you that right now it's basically starting up. And remember, this is the first time you've done it. So let it do what it does. Don't try to get it to heat immediately. We don't worry about that. We just literally fire it up um, and let it see what it does, okay? Now it will be loud when it first comes on and all that stuff, it's, there's a lot of things going on. But right now I'm starting to smell a little bit of diesel, which means it's drawing um, air in through the burn chamber and it will uh, start to kick on here in a minute. We're not gonna worry about adjusting power or anything because right now we just wanna get it up. So let's let it do what it does. Uh-oh, uh-oh. So now, you hear the, that, now that's the fuel pump. Oh, now see the fuel pump has come on. So that means it's done a system check and everything is good to go. So now it's gonna go ahead and fire up. And so right now it's pumping fuel into the burn chamber. The next thing you should see uh, is the glow plug and the glow plug is on in green. So theoretically it'll come on here in a second. Um, you just, again, the first time you do it, you just don't pressure it, right? Just. Just let it start the system because it's the first time you've ever touched it so it needs to prime itself it needs to start operating properly because that's a, just a good practice for how you're going to use it for the rest of uh, its life so right now we're just waiting for it to fire up and you can hear that the fuel pump is starting to get faster click 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 and i've used them so long guys that I'm not really bothered by it. Do I try to mitigate the noise? Yeah, I try to put it in places where I'm not gonna hear it as much and I don't solidly mount them. But man, when I'm in the forest and I'm freezing, it doesn't really matter. <laughs> Once I turn it on, I go to sleep because usually I've been on trail all day long and it's, you know, 10 outside or minus five and who cares? Cause you're warm. You're like, oh. So let's let it go. Here it comes.
right now. Um, you can hear it drawing through there. That's where it's gonna draw from. And then it'll blow it out there into the truck. And I'll kind of take you around and let you hear everything. Do you hear that tick, 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 tick? That's about as loud as the fuel pump is. So nothing big. But anyway, look at this. Uh, the temperature that it's putting out right now, you couldn't leave it on for more than two or three minutes in this Bronco with the door shut and everything. It's hotter than your factory heater, put it that way, by like tenfold. So, yeah, there it is. Okay, guys, here it is. It's complete, put back together. Man, I'm super excited. Um, first 6th gen Bronco with a diesel heater in preparation of having an Ursa Minor and this is just going to make life wonderful. Uh, that's my map light when, when it's buggy. I can use it. It's red and I can shine it on my food right here when I'm cooking and I don't have to worry about bugs. Anyway, um, man guys, I can't tell you how happy I am. This is super, super nice. Let's take a look over here. Yeah. Now that it's completely Together, you can kind of see how everything lays together. Oh, this is going to be a game changer. It is so hot, guys. Like, wow. Man, I'm happy. Quick things to take away, diesel heater. Um, I'm super stoked. Thanks for watching. Thanks for joining me. Um, if you're going to get into the diesel heater game, make sure you do two things and follow them as the best you can. I always go with the Viva brand. Um, I've had, this is the third one now, and they just last and, and they work really well. Uh, perfect practices. Um, when you first fire it up on the trail, turn it all the way up. I mean, open the doors, open whatever you're using it in, open your van, crank it all the way up, burn it down. Uh, and then lower it down to whatever temperature you want, okay? Uh, in the morning, before you're gonna uh, get on the trail and, and take off again. Make sure you do the same thing. I want you to do the same thing. I want you to um, Open the doors again or slightly open them and crank it up make it uh, super hot in there again because That that cleans out that burn chamber that makes that soot uh, Go away and if you know anything about diesel trucks and stuff you always hear about them having buildup That's because they're people use them for city trucks Hey, you gotta be on them all the time to make sure they stay cleaned out because of the soot they build up because there's oil in the fuel itself. So, um, oh yeah, shameless plug. Obviously don't forget to check me out on YouTube as you're watching now. And then of course on Instagram as well. I put a lot of stuff on there. Anyway, there's still a lot to go. Um, and just so you know, this is in preparation for me hopefully going full time after uh, my next two years of this company, that'll be 20 years, and I'm hoping to be able to hit the road. Me and this guy, one unit, one rig, just going. And so that's why it was important for me to have this. So now you see it, it's ready, it looks good. I'm gonna turn it down, let it cool off, and then uh, get ready for some Easters. I appreciate all you guys watching. I appreciate all you guys commenting on these videos. Um, if there's ever anything I can help you with, let me know. Reach out in the comments. Everybody in here will tell you I'm super active on it, and I will do whatever it takes to give you as much information as you can. Um, remember, give this video a like. Give me a hug. You're not hugging me because you love me. You're hugging me because you're telling uh, the algorithm of YouTube, hey, listen, I don't want you to tell me what I should watch. I'm going to tell you what I want to watch. And by liking these Bronco videos, it'll feed you more of it. Um, shout out to Christina right there. Bum. Uh, cool brand. Check them out. Um, but that's it, guys. Thanks for following, and thanks for uh, enjoying this venture with me, man. Uh, I enjoy doing all this for you, and I think you guys can see that. So, on to the next thing, right? See you guys next time.